Okay, let's talk about rates, ratios, and proportions. And yes, 100% of you need to know this, especially if you're at the middle school or high school or beyond in terms of your math levels. Again, uh, this is generally taught in the middle school. So if you're at like the elementary uh, school, primary, like basic arithmetic, you may not have seen rates, ratios, and proportions yet, but they are coming. And these are very, very uh, common in terms of all sorts of tests, standardized tests. You're going to see a ton of these type of problems. And rates, ratios, and proportions are all kind of interrelated. Generally speaking, when you study this, you don't study rates by themselves. You study rates and ratios and proportions. So if you know what a rate is, a ratio is, and a proportion, if you have a good sense of what they are, put that into the comment section. I'd be interested in seeing what your definitions are for these uh, very important math terms. But I'm going to go over this here in one second so you can walk away having a great understanding of rates, ratios, and proportions. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. And if you're struggling in math, please do not give up. There is absolute hope for you. But the main thing you need is great math instruction clear, understandable, and comprehensive. And that's where I can help you out. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level in terms of mathematics, check out my math help program. You can find a link to it in the description of this video. I promise uh, you'll like what you uh, will see. Now, if you happen to be preparing for some sort of test with the math section, and there's a ton of them out there, things like the SAT, ACT, ASVAB, maybe the GED, or a teacher certification exam, I have a ton of test prep courses that you might want to check out. If you homeschool, I have award-winning homeschool math courses for middle and high school mathematics, something you might want to check out. And if you need a pair of math notes, hopefully you have your own, okay? Taking great math notes is so critical to uh, your success in mathematics. But if you don't um, have a pair of great math notes, you can check out mine. I'm going to leave links to uh, my notes in the description of this video. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. But uh, let's go ahead and get into rates, ratios, and proportions. And we'll start off with rates and ratios. So what is a rate? What is a ratio? Well, effectively, I just want you to remember that these are essentially fractions, okay? They are fractions. So if you uh, answered, hey, a rate and a ratio is a fraction, well, you would be pretty much correct. However, there's a little bit of a twist, okay? So we have to uh, discuss something called the uh, units of measure, okay? So uh, rates and ratios are measuring something uh, very specific, i.e. a fraction might be like, say, the fraction two-thirds. Well, this is just a fraction. It doesn't really, um, you know, we wouldn't say that this is a rate or a ratio because what makes a rate or a ratio is the following. So let's go ahead and talk about rates here. Now, a rate, again, is a fraction, but what makes a rate a rate is we have to have units of measure. Okay? In other words, we're counting something specific. So if we look at the numerator, okay, of course, a fraction, you have a numerator and a denominator. The deal with a rate is the following. The units of measure are different. Okay, This unit of measure here, okay, is completely different than this unit of measure down there. Now, what do I mean by unit of measure? Well, here I have the fraction 60 over 1, okay? So it's just 60, but it's 60 over 1. What am I counting up here in the numerators? Well, I'm counting miles. What concept is this? Well, that's distance, right? So 60 miles is a, uh, the units I'm, um, of measure is, of course, miles. But what am I measuring? Well, I'm measuring distance. And uh, let's take a look down here in the denominator. We have one hour. Okay, what's the unit of measure? Well, it's hours, but I'm uh, basically counting time. So you're comparing two different units of measure. So technically, that would be the technical definition of a rate. You're comparing two different units of measure. So I eat distance versus time, and it could be two completely um, uh, other type of units of measure. It doesn't have to be just distance of time, like something like here, 60 miles per hour. Okay, so we have 60 miles. And by the way, the fraction bar in a rate, you say the word per. Okay, so 60 miles per one hour. Of course, you would write this as 60 miles per hour. So anytime you hear that word per, okay, we're talking generally about a rate. All right, let's take a look at another example of a rate. 
So let's say you have a pump that can pump out 20 gallons out of, let's say, you know, pool of water or whatnot every five minutes. Okay, this is the rate of the pump. So, you know, what's the rate of a car, for example? Well, it might be 60 miles per hour. What's the rate of a pump? Well, it's uh, 20 gallons per five minutes. So this term rate often gets associated with the concept of like speed or velocity, okay, how fast something goes. So, hey, at, um, you know, what's the rate of a vehicle, et cetera, et cetera. So you might have, you know, kind of a pretty good idea that that's how this word is used. But let's go over here and continue to take a look at this second example of a rate. So what am I comparing here? Gallons, okay? Well, this unit of measure here, gallons, is completely different than this unit of measure down here, which is minutes. So gallons is a measurement of volume, and minutes is, of course, time. So again, you're, we're making a comparison of two completely different units of measure and expressed as some sort of fraction. That is a rate, okay? All right, so now let's take a look at ratios. So ratio is basically the same kind of concept, okay, as a rate. We're comparing um, units of measure. However, the units of measure here are the same, okay? So effectively, unit of measure is the same. Let's go ahead and make some nice little, lovely little notes here for you. Uh, and over here, units of measure are different, okay? We're comparing two different units of measure here. We're generally, we're, well, not generally, we are in fact counting the same units of measure. There's a little bit of a twist here. So let's take a look at, a look at an example of ratios because students get confused with this. So a uh, typical um, uh, unit of measure you might, uh, or ratio you might have heard is like a student-teacher ratio. So for example, let me actually erase this here a bit and give ourselves some room. So a student-teacher ratio is here is the classroom, here is the teacher, and here are the students. So typically what schools or colleges like to, you know, advertise is, hey, we have one teacher per this many students. That's called a student-to-teacher uh, ratio. So here's an example of one. So for every 20 students, you will have one teacher, okay, or one teacher per or two every uh uh, 20 students. So in ratios, the fraction bar right here is uh, expressed with this word two. Unlike over here, when we're dealing with rates, we have like 60 miles per uh, one hour. Here we have 20 students to one teacher or one teacher to uh, every 20 students. So the word two is associated with ratios. But let's get back to the main uh, definition. Here we're saying, well, this is counting students and this is counting uh, teachers. The units of measure are different. No, they're not different, okay? What we're counting are people, human beings, right? So 20 people, which we'd we named these people students, and then this person here is a teacher. Now, some of you might say, well, a teacher is not a human being. Ha, ha, ha. That's a little joke. But yes, indeed, we all are all part of the human race, students and teachers, especially math teachers, right? But anyways, so you get the idea. So don't let the names trick you here. Okay, You're still counting the same thing conceptually. So that is a ratio. Let's take a look at another example of a ratio. Let's say in a parking lot. You, um, count, you're counting all the cars and you notice for every three large cars, you have 10 small cars. So this is a ratio to maybe large to small cars in a parking lot. So uh, again, you're using the word ratio. You wouldn't say the rate of uh, large to small cars in a parking lot. That's incorrect, right? Because here we are comparing cars to cars. Okay, here people to people. We're here, it's completely different distance to time or volume to time, okay? All right, so rates and ratios are fractions, but we have to be very specific about the difference here in terms of units of measure, all right? So hopefully this has cleared up any confusion, and now let's move on to proportions. Okay, so what is a proportion? Well, it's very, very easy. A proportion is simply one fraction that's equal to another fraction. So here I have one fraction, one half, and here it's equal to the other, uh, this fraction here, 5 tenths. Now, 1 half could be equal to all sorts of fractions, 3, 6. I can make all sorts of comparisons. 4 over 8 is equal to 50 over 100. So all these right here would be considered proportions. So anytime you have two equal fractions, uh, you have a proportion. 
So the main thing you need to know about proportions is there is a property called the cross product. Okay, the cross product, super, super important. And basically the cross product is this, okay? If we multiply crosswise, so let's go here, two times five, two times five, that's gonna be equal to this cross product right here, one times 10. So two times five is 10, one times 10, of course, is 10. So when it comes to a proportion, the cross product is true. And this is the main thing that we use to solve proportion problems. So um, you might be asking yourself, okay, uh, we're talking about, uh, you know, one fraction equal to another fraction. So how does proportions relate to rates and ratios? Well, rates and ratios are fractions, okay? So when we're dealing with rates and or uh, ratio um, uh, problems, like these, of course, can be expressed as fractions, so we can oftentimes set up a nice proportion to solve these problems, okay? Basically, this is how you solve rate and ratio problems is through this concept of setting up a proportion because you know a rate and a ratio is a fraction. So if we can set up two equal fractions or two equal ratios or two equal rates, then we can solve these problems using the cross product. So let's go and take a look at one quick example. All right, so rates, ratio, and proportion problems. So this is a basic example. So let's go ahead and read it. So it says a school needs a uh, one to 15 to, uh, teacher student ratio, i.e. for every uh, 15 students, there can only be one teacher, okay? So uh, the school has 600 students. How many teachers does it need to hire? So a lot of you could probably reason this through, you know, uh, even if you didn't understand uh, ratios, proportions, and etc. You probably kind of figure this out, but let's go ahead and set this up. So the way you want to set up a problem like this is one, recognize that you're dealing with a ratio. Okay, so a school needs a one to fifteen student teacher ratio. All right, one to fifteen. So anytime you see something like this, one to fifteen, you can express that as one to fifteen. We talked about that, right? That this little fraction bar is the word two. So one, two, 15, this is a ratio. But now we have to use the rest of this information. And the idea here is to set up a proportion. So let's go ahead and take a look at this, um, uh, the kind of the technique you use. So the first thing is you write down the ratio that you're given in a problem. Okay, so this is a very typical basic type of rate, ratio, and pro proportion type of problem. So we know that we have one teacher to 15 students as a ratio. Now, just write that ratio down right here, but you have to be very, very mindful of what the numerator and denominator are uh, measuring. So one to 15, the numerator is measuring the teachers and the denominator is measuring the students. So what we wanna do is figure out how many teachers, right, for 600 students. So you wanna construct another fraction. Remember, we wanna set up a proportion. That's the main idea here. So we have one ratio equal to another ratio. And what the information we have is that we have 600 students. So one to 15 right here, well, we have the student information. That's 15, that's the denominator. So we're gonna put 600 here as our students, okay? So this is a common error, uh, common place where students get confused. They'll set up the uh, a, uh, ratio or they'll set up their proportions incorrectly. Just remember that over here, we have teachers to students. So on the right-hand side, when, you, when you're setting up this fraction, you have to have the units of measure um, in the same consistent place. So the students are down in the denominator, so we have to put students to, in the denominator on here. So we have 600 students, but we don't know how many teachers, that's what we're trying to look for. So this is the variable we're trying to solve for, okay? All right, so this is how you uh, set up a proportion. So let me go ahead and erase this. So how are we gonna solve this? Well, we're going to use the cross product, okay? This is a proportion, we're missing this value. So we can go this times this, so 15 times X is 15 X is equal to one times 600. Of course, that's 600. Now to uh, solve this basic equation, I simply have to divide uh, the equation both sides by um, 15 and I get X is equal to 40. So what is X? Well, that is the number of teachers needed. So you need uh, 40 teachers, okay? Uh, for this school size of 600 to have a consistent one 
to 15 student teacher ratio. Okay, so how are you doing with all this topic? If you knew all this stuff and you're like, I already knew all of this, I could have just skipped this video and watched something cooler, you know, well, listen, you know, I always try to help you, but if you knew all this, I must reward you with a nice A++, a 110% and multiple stars for being such an awesome math teacher. But I suspect uh, the majority of you, uh, you out there probably picked up on some piece of knowledge that maybe you were missing about rates and ratios and uh, proportions. Um, and again, the thing is this, you wanna continue to strengthen your skills. Even if you know, you know, like a, some basics, uh, concepts about a rates and a ratio and proportion, what you wanna do is master the stuff, okay? That's the key to being successful in mathematics. Don't try to learn the minimum amount. That is completely the wrong approach to learn math. You wanna learn the maximum amount, okay? So study it. And just, you know, tell yourself that you can learn this stuff because you absolutely can. If you need more help with rates, ratios, and proportions, um, I'll suggest a couple of courses in my math help program. Um, probably uh, my pre-algebra and algebra one courses are going to be the most appropriate uh, for those of you out there. I cover both, of course, uh, uh, these uh, topics in both of those courses. So that's a good, that's probably my best recommendation for you. Also, I've done additional videos on my YouTube channel you could sort through because um, I have over a thousand plus math videos on my channel from basic math to calculus. So you can just kind of go through there. I have a ton of help. And of course, I make all of this with the uh, idea that I am helping you with mathematics because I don't want you to give up. And if this video helps you out, please uh, hit that like button and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.